Well, one of the jobs that I was in, assigned to in Japan was uh, working at a Japanese army arsenal in <clears throat> in the middle of Tokyo where other intelligence teams that had run through Japan looking for documents that might be of further interest to the uh, U.S. or the Allies, uh, they, uh, they went out, to this group went out to the field, and, uh, in essence searched through most military uh, facilities, uh, factories, whatnot, and sent what they thought were of intelligence, uh, would have some of the intelligence that could be used. Well, they ship them into Tokyo. I was on one of the temporaries that worked uh, with this group at the arsenal as this stuff came in. The guys in Hawaii, the Hawaiian Japanese, are a little more, little more forward. They, they're not afraid to speak up. So they said, hey, Frank, come sign this, come sign this petition. I said, what for? Well, we want to tell the director of the lab, director of the school, we don't want to go teach. We want to go to Japan. So I said, sure. I signed it. And the director called us in. Oh, he was angry. He said, next time you guys do this, I'm going to court-martial every one of you. And, of course, with a court-martial, that, that uh, destroys your entire military, military career. So we all reluctantly, so I taught there for another year. And uh, I was able to make it up to Master Sergeant. So uh, when, the, when I was discharged, I was discharged as a, as a Master Sergeant. And uh, during the, uh, uh, let's see, what they call it? When, when I was being discharged, they wanted me to join the reserves. And uh, I don't think, there were very few people. You know, the war, war had already ended back in, that was, uh, let's see, 1940. I, I graduated in 45, and this was 46 when I, when I was being discharged. And uh, so uh, I said, give me a commission and I'll join the reserve. And uh, they said, uh, why do you want a commission? And I said, uh, well, look, at the school, he, us Japanese Americans were given six months to learn the language and we get one extra stripe, a private first class. Now, the white guys get a whole year to learn the Japanese language, and they get a commission as a second lieutenant. Give me a commission, I'll, I'll join. He said, no, we can't do that. I said, forget it. In 1948, I was in Madeira when I got a letter from the Signal Corps saying that we're ready to uh, accept you in the Signal Corps, U.S. Army. Please sign. Uh, these forms and so I took the commission as a second lieutenant in the reserves and uh, I kept up my reserve duty um, bare minimum going to Fresno in the evenings to for training training purposes of course little did I know that in 1950 the Korean War started and uh, next thing I know I was uh, over in in Korea. After nine months, uh, we graduated out of the class, and uh, however, I got accepted to go to the officer's candidate school down at Fort Belvoir. And so I went down there with about four other people, and uh, it was, uh, we got our, we were ready to get our commission when the war ended by that time. So you can see that all my life, during the military time, wartime, I was going from school to camp life and 
all this kind of thing. Although the war was ended, they, we graduated and got our commission. And that's, and they went back to Fort Chinelli and we got our orders to go to the occupation of Japan. When we first got there after getting off of the ship, you can just see the shambles of the uh, Yokohama, all the bombing and all that. And the people were really uh, desperate for food. And we were in a camp there nearby there it's called the, the replacement center. And uh, these people would come into the camp and go through the garbage cans and the garbage uh, thing to pick up as many food they can eat, this kind of thing. And uh, it was, I felt really sorry for that, for that mother. With the war ended, there was nothing to do for us. There was a military government uh, nearby too, and they had their Nisei fellows, and they were doing the work out there. We as a headquarters had a, so my roommate happened to be a captain in the uh, engineering corps, and he was, uh, he was uh, in, in the so-called 583rd construction group. So he, I asked him, can't you get me transferred over there? Because with my engineering background and my Japanese, I could really help. So that's what happened. So I was an engineer officer from there on. After the war, they, they, uh, we went out to this big airport there, and uh, we processed all the German PWs there. And then uh, after that, they sent us up to uh, Northern Italy in Lake, uh, Lake Lecco, and uh, the four four sequence. You know, there's there each individual different places were scattered around, but then we we got together. My, my brother was at B Company, and then my other older brother was in F Company, and uh, when I first got there, I, we I went up. I got went to look for or looked them up. I went to B Company. I got hold of of um, my brother Moss, and then we knew uh, Sano was an F company, my older brother Sano. So we went out, went out walked up there, because they were, they were, you know, all camped out in a big long line, you know, getting ready to process the Germans in the, the final push. I, I think my mother was, you know, quite worried, but she, she took it that, you know, she felt that we're doing our job service the country. Uh, part of the group that I trained with went to the 442nd, and the rest of us, we stayed on for an awful long time. Uh, in fact, the war ended in, in May, and we didn't go overseas until, until June. And um, we did go overseas on the, on the Queen Mary. Uh, that, uh, that's a big ship. and. Uh, but when we uh, left the harbor in New York, uh, we hit a big storm, and uh, that, that ship was just rocking back and forth like it was a rowboat. And, uh, <clears throat> and after we all got thoroughly seasick, uh, it settled down, and, and we went, uh, and the rest of the trip was, was without any problems. Uh, by the way, um, on the ship, uh, uh, Jerry Colonna and Bob, Bob Hope were on the ship, and they entertained us one night. When we got to uh, to Europe, uh, we were um, we went to uh, from from England to uh, La Havre, France, up to, up on the train to to a uh, replacement depot called in Plattenberg, Germany, and from there we went to initially we went to an ACAC outfit for about a month, and then they were being uh, sent back to the States, and so we were were sent to Belgium and we were assigned to the 390th MP Service Battalion. <clears throat> this, the main mission of this unit was to guard the freight trains from Antwerp, Belgium, into uh, Holland, and on to uh, Germany down the Rhine River. Uh, and then after uh, the war, I, I came back to my hometown, and um, I stayed with my oldest brother, and in, in that area, in Tulare County, the, the job, uh, market was very bad and so I was becoming a burden to my brother so I decided I would go to school and so um, I applied to Cal and uh, for pharmacy and I got accepted and went to San UCSF San Francisco to pharmacy school. 
Uh, in the in the in the um, pharmacy school, uh, uh, they had this ROTC program, and uh, at that particular time, the uh, major who was in charge of this program said that, "Well, you're a World War II veteran, and and there's not likely to be a war going uh, starting in the near future." So we all signed up for ROTC, but little did we know that that between my junior and senior year. The Korean War broke out, and so when I graduated, I um, I was uh, was commissioned to, and then eventually went to Korea later on that year. Korea, uh, uh, my main job was mess motor and supply. I was in charge of the medical company's mess motor and supply, and um, but when the doo doo hit the fan, well, I'd either had to go up to the battalion aid station or to the collecting station. And um, at the, at, at the uh, uh, Batan A station, we had a lot of, of the casualties there. And, uh, and, the, and they had, the enemy fire was quite heavy there at that, at that station there. And uh, we, we, uh, we had whole blood there. And uh, uh, so uh, surprisingly, we were able to treat a lot of the soldiers with whole blood rather than the the other artificial blood that uh, was provided previously. Um, I remember uh, one time uh, this one soldier was brought in. His leg was practically shot off, and uh, it was just hanging on by by a half inch of skin. And uh, and I looked at that and I said, "Gosh, I mean, here we are on the front lines, and how are we going to treat that?" But uh, we, we, we were able to pack the, uh, the wound up and, and tape it up. And when he left uh, to the rear, uh, he looked like he just got out of the emergency room here in the States. Most all Japanese Americans were, uh, whatever assignment they were given, they do the best they can. And that's, uh, uh, that was our, our, our feeling. <laughs> As my feeling, anyway, and I think it's also uh, the nature of Japanese Americans that whatever you're assigned to do, do the very best, and most of them, yeah, uh, did. <laughs>